morning youth hope you guys are doing well this is your midweek encouragement video i'm going to jump right in uh, we're going to be continuing with part three of the 30 wise sayings um, and so we're going to be looking at numbers 11 through 15 this morning and so we're going to be in proverbs chapter 23 and we're going to be starting in verse 12 it says apply your heart to instruction and your ear to words of knowledge do not withhold discipline from a child. If you strike him with a rod, he will not die. If you strike him with the rod, you will save his soul from shale. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart too will be glad. My inmost being will exult when your lips speak what is right. Let not your heart envy sinners, but continue in the fear of the Lord all the day. Surely there is a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your heart in the way. Be not among drunkards, or among gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. As we've done in the past, when we've looked at uh, these, these groupings of sayings, uh, we're just going to look at these one by one, and and talk about kind of what they have going on so um number 11 it, it is this idea of being a lifelong learner if if you can learn to appreciate your opportunities to learn your hunger and your your desire for knowledge and wisdom will be almost ever present in your life uh, Ecclesiastes talks about how God has put curiosity in the hearts of men. Um, and my argument there is use it. God made you curious. Use that curiosity. Number 12 is this idea that discipline is a necessary measure from those who love us. Uh, it's this idea that no, no parent likes to discipline their kid. Um, it, it doesn't feel good. And I think a lot of times like we read these things about discipline in Proverbs and we think that they're aimed towards the child. But I think this one is aimed towards the parents because he says, if you strike him with a rod, he will not die. It's this idea that it, discipline often is not, um, is not a happy thing. And, and most parents that I know do not take pleasure when they have to discipline their kid. Um, or at least maybe they shouldn't. But yet the Proverbs and the teachers tell us it is worthwhile because discipline in the heart of a child, it, it is going to help form them into a better person. A person, if, they, if the discipline comes from a place of godly wisdom, a person who more is, a, is attuned and keyed in and desires the things of God themselves in the future. Number 13 is this idea of living a life that makes your mama proud. Um, I think this is a, in, in Proverbs, I think this is their way of, of bringing up the Hebrew and the, the just general good idea of honoring your father and your mother. He says, my son, if your heart is wise, my heart too will be glad. Our parents, when, you know, when things are right in the world with, with our relationships with our parents, they delight when we are living well and acting wisely. Live a life that will make your mama proud. Number 14 is the idea of being content in the Lord. Trust God's justice. It says, let your heart not envy sinners, but continue to fear the Lord all the day. It can be easy when we see, especially folks who have done wrong time and time again, they don't ever seem to have a consequence and things just keep kind of being yes anded and, and keep getting favorable to them. And, and the teacher here reminds us, don't envy them. Don't envy them if they are not doing what's right. Rather, trust that God is going to, to deal with it. Be content in the Lord. So number 15, when we hang out with people who live dangerous lifestyles, we have a tendency to catch that lifestyle ourselves. I, I have shared in the past that mudslides downhill. Um, 
And while Jesus, yes, did hang out with tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes, and we as Christians should be interacting with, with people in our lives who are not believers, and we should be engaging the culture, we have to know our limits. We have to know the extent to which we can engage with the culture and it not be detrimental to us. Be mindful of the types of activities your friends do and guard yourself against them. All of these um, this week have something to do with the ideas of legacy and the ideas of, of uh, uh, reputation amongst people. And the argument here that the teacher's trying to make is we should live lives where our, our reputation points people to God and our legacy leaves something behind that causes people to say, look at all God did for them. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you this morning. We just thank you for your word. I just pray that as we seek to live it out, that you would help us to live lives that are honoring to you that our reputa reputation would point people towards you and the legacy we would leave behind would be one where you are evident in it. We love you and thank you. Help us to honor you in the rest of the week. In your name we pray. Amen. Alrighty, righty, y'all. Uh, missed y'all Sunday. Hope you had a happy Mother's Day. We will see you guys all this Sunday. We'll be leaving the church at 1 o'clock for our hike. We're going to be going to Silver Falls. And so if y'all can be here, bring some water, bring some walking shoes and some money for some snacks if you would like to buy those. So we will see you Sunday. Love y'all. Have a good week.